Sanjeev had talked about uh, digital transformation yesterday. He mentioned the identity and security is at the heart of any digital transformation, right? Uh, so if, when you have a digital business, what does that mean is if your identity concept is not there, if your security is not there, the entire digital business is not useful. If you can't log into the system, first of all, you can't do anything there, right? So the digital uh, business really requires an identity concept as its core, as its heart. So what does that mean? Uh, what does the identity-centric business, uh, digital business means is the digital business is all about users, right? Uh, why you are providing a digital business? You are supporting the user, and the digital business is centered around the user. What does that mean? The system should know who is accessing the system, right? Uh, what kind of things the user can do in the system? Uh, what are his preferences? What are the uh, rules and uh, regulations he has to adhere to within the system? Uh, what are the relationship between various entities within the system related to the user, related to me? So this is all around. Uh, the concepts around the users, concepts around me, uh, has to be the central part of the identity, uh, uh, central part of the digital business. So that means proper identity enforcement uh, and proper identity uh, identification is uh, essential part of uh, your customer experience, the customer's security, customer's uh, privacy, etc. Right? In this particular system, if uh, the customer or if the identity is not handled properly, possibly the customer might lose some data, uh, possibly the customer might lose some privacy from it, uh, or his privacy part. So this is very important uh, for a digital business to handle and uh, for kind of part of the heart within a digital transformation. So what does this mean? First of all, it has to be, uh, we have to talk about the concept of authentication, right? What the authentication means is you try to access the system and the system identifies who you are, right? So there are several mechanisms available uh, to handle the authentication. Uh, common, you, common authentication mechanism is username password, which we all familiar with, right? We give the username. We give the password, uh, so either the password goes uh, as it is, which is called the basic authentication, or you create a hash of the password and then set it, which is called the digest authentication, or possibly you might be, uh, log in to the system by using an X509 certificate, which is the TLS mutual authentication, right? So don't worry really about the authentication mechanisms, uh, but there are several credentials which you can pass and then you can get into the system. And the system verifies by looking at your credentials and then mapping to the user within the system, within the business, and then identify who, uh, access, who is accessing this particular system, right? However, the problem with the digital business is often it requires to integrate multiple systems seamlessly, right? So if you log into one system, that is not enough. Most of the time, right? You are logging. You might be logging into one system, but in order to achieve something, you might have to log into multiple systems in order to achieve uh, what you want to do. So, what does that mean? Now, as a user, now you have to deal with multiple systems with multiple uh, different authentication mechanisms. So, one problem might be you might have to use different username passwords because uh, uh, the username is already you know, taken in various systems, right? Again, one of the problem of the digital business, uh, digital transformation is you often have to deal with uh, publicly available services like Salesforce or Gmail or uh, some publicly available system. Not only your internal organization system, internal system, but even publicly available system. So then the user credentials is a bit difficult to handle. So you might not be able to guarantee that whatever the preferred credential is available in all the systems, right? Which will result in people go and create various uh, credentials in various systems, which often result in uh, 
you have to remember various credentials or uh, even if you identify say username password still you have to uh, enter in the username password in various system in order to uh, access all these systems right at the same time because you are using multiple credentials or same credential in multiple system loses the possible collaboration between the system so in salesforce i can log in as shankar in uh, gmail i can log in as shankar but both two systems identify shankar as two different users right then the possible collaboration between these two systems is gone so the salesforce might know okay there is a user coming but uh, they will not know what the corresponding user in the gmail so the, any, any possible collaborations are gone there so what does uh, the mechanism to solve that is something called broker authentication so the broker authentication what it does is all these service providers trust some other party to vouch for you right uh, to say okay this is a particular user i know the person uh, is authenticating to the system and all other systems all other service providers in this particular picture we have shown it as service providers all other service provider trust the identity provider and the user only logs in to the identity provider and then all other systems get some kind of a opaque token right it's uh, similar to like you are getting a uh, passport or you are getting uh, a driving license from some regulator right uh, you go and authenticate or you go and prove your identity to the passport authority they give a passport you take the passport to various countries and the, those countries will not know you but they have a trust with the the authority which issued the password and because of that they trust your passport passport and let you to go inside the country right which is a kind of an example of broker authentication again there are several protocols available uh, to in order to achieve the broker authentication uh, so uh, don't worry about that uh, just have to understand that there are several protocols available which also as side effect you also get something called single sign on right now because there is only single identity provider let's say uh, you are trying to access a service provider a which is trusting an identity provider so you go to the identity provider get a corresponding token now uh, when you go to service provider b if you trust the same identity provider now the second time you don't need to log in to the identity provider because you already have logged in and transparently it can uh, redirect you to the uh, to the service provider b with a particular token right that results in you only log in only once and all other systems you can access seamlessly without having any issues right so uh, which result in single sign so this is kind of a common scenario you would get into when you are dealing with uh, digital transformation and dis digital businesses so when you are selecting an identity provider you have to look for uh, whether it provides uh, broker authentication in order to achieve this again one of the other problem is use users might want to use their social identities so how do you deal with that right uh, often when you talk to various people uh, if they try uh, you can often hear this particular comment say i went to this particular web page they asking me to create username password so i didn't try to create the username password i just dropped the idea of creating uh, accessing that particular service right which uh, nowadays now all, almost all the people are having facebook uh, twitter linkedin profiles uh, gmail etc so when they want to access a particular application uh, they prefer to access by using any of these credentials right that forces the enterprises that forces the digital business to enable identities uh, which are social identities right again uh, that also forces the identity provider to recognize these social identities as one of the possible identities which they can use uh, within their system so there is a concept called 
bring your own identity. Uh, so when a user comes to the system, they can bring their own identity. You don't need to have a corresponding identity within the identity provider. They can bring any of these social, social identities and should be able to access the system. Or users might want to use their enterprise. So let's say there are two enterprises, enterprise A and B. Uh, so A is providing a service and users from enterprise B wants to access the uh, services provided by enterprise A. Right? This is again a, a, a part of the federated identity or the broker identity. Uh, let's say in this particular situation there are two domains A and B. And the services are provided by B. Uh, the services within B domain only trust the identity provider within the domain B, right? However, the user is only can achieve only uh, knows how to log into identity provider A. So what happens here? The user wants to access the services provided by domain B, and since the services trust identity provider B they will redirect the users to the identity provider B. However, identity provider B uh, doesn't know this particular user because he, uh, he or she doesn't belongs to the identity domain B. However, the identity provider B trusts identity provider A. So because of that, they will be redirected back to identity provider A. Now the user can provide his credentials to identity provider A, get a token, pass it to identity provider B and identity provider B will do some pre-processing on that particular token, pass it to the services and the user will be able to access the services. So this kind of scenarios are called identity federation. Right? So this is again one of the main requirements when you are designing your digital enterprise and digital businesses, etc. because uh, your objective of digital business is to allow as many users to come and access your system. So you shouldn't restrict who can access the systems. As far as possible, you should be able to let them to bring in any identities and as far as possible, uh, support them to access the system. Okay, so these options also uh, requires you to do something called multi-option authentication. So I talk about the systems where a user can bring Gmail, uh, users can bring Facebook credentials, users can bring uh, uh, LinkedIn uh, credentials or from some other enterprises, etc. So when you are designing your application, your login option has to be given for each of these items. So any credentials coming, you will be able to accept as a valid credential within your system. Right? So that is something called a multi-option authentication. In this particular scenario, uh, the service one requires either Yahoo or Facebook. Service two might require Twitter or Google credentials. So basically the idea is for a particular service, you allow multiple possible authentication mechanism and let the user to choose what they want to authenticate with. Right? And somehow you identify the user and let the user to access the system. Okay, which result into some other concept called identity bus. So the problem here is now the user is coming with a particular identity. Uh, let's say I am coming with uh, Gmail. And we have a service which only accept uh, LinkedIn credentials, right? I have a Gmail credentials, you need a LinkedIn credentials or you need some other credentials. Now there has to be a mechanism which converts my credential into the credentials needed by that particular application. Right? So again, uh, there is a conversion process going on uh, and which we call it as identity bus. The people who, are, who work with integration, for example, will recognize this pattern uh, when you use enterprise service bus. When you have multiple services talk to each other, you don't do point to point, right? Uh, you go through a bus and uh, you convert your token or convert your communication into something the bus can understand. And bus will talk on behalf of you to the other system. So you avoid end to end 
corrections, but rather you do n plus n corrections, right? That will reduce the complexity of the integration. So the same concept applies to the identity as well. Uh, more and more, when you integrate multiple applications, now you have to worry about how the credentials are going to get mapped into various systems, which result into this concept called identity bus, right? So that is again uh, one of the main area which uh, is important in the research business. Okay, so now the identity links all the systems. So uh, earlier, let's say now you are using your Gmail to access your bank, Gmail to access your insurance systems, and so on. Earlier, people will might not have motivation to attack your Gmail address, right? At, they might not have motivation to attack and get your Gmail credential because even if they get it, they can only go and read your email. That might not be enough motivation for them to attack However, now your Gmail credential links all the systems, which gives attackers the more motivation to attack it. Right? So that means your credentials, the, the, the risk of the credential increases. When you, uh, when you integrate all these systems together and be able to access all the systems using a single credential. Right? So how do you solve that? So uh, often, uh, most of the cases, uh, the uh, problem of the credential is the weak credential. The weakest link within the chain is uh, the weak uh, password of most of the cases. Right? So most of the time, uh, any data breach or any attack happen by using uh, some poorly uh, uh, maintained credentials. Either password is wrong or password is written in a paper, pasted on the computer, one or the other. Right? Uh, so uh, how do you solve that? There are some concepts called multi-factor authentication. So again, this is something uh, you have to think about when you design your uh, digital business. So what does multi-factor authentication mean is uh, when you are accessing the system, you are using more than one factor in order to access it. Right? Uh, so there are three factors which are available. One is what you know, which is like your password, or what you have, which is might be a token or your phone or some something you possess, or what you are, which is coming with your uh, biometrics, like uh, thumbprint or your retina scan or something. So multi-factor authentication means combine two factors, or uh, you can combine three as well, but uh, general case is to combine only two factors together, and then provide the credentials uh, based on that, right? So even if you lose your password, if you have the RSA token, or if you have your thumb with you, obviously, other people will not be able to access your system, right? So uh, now the credential linked all the systems together, but then the attack possibility of the credential increases, but with the help of the multi-factor authentication, you can reduce the risk of that particular attack. Okay, but that also causes another problem. Now, all the time you want to log into the system, now you have to give both the options, right? Even though you are accessing your system from your home, which you are 100% sure nobody would have come to your machine and would have logged in, but still you have to give both credentials, right? So that result in something called adaptive authentication. So adaptive authentication means uh, the authentication system or the system identifies the conditions where the user tries to authenticate the system and adjust what kind of options needed in order to access the system. Let's say you are accessing the system from home by using your IP address, your MAC address, which generally you access. Possibly only password is enough. If you are accessing the system from some unknown MAC address, you might need username and biometric, so username and a token. If you are accessing your system using some unknown country, possibly yes, it might let you to access it, but with restricted uh, options you can do within the system, right? So adaptive authentication adjusts the authentication options based on the conditions which are available. 
So this is again one of the common uh, requirements for digital businesses. Okay, so now we talk about uh, accessing the system. The second option is how you are creating the users within the system, which is called provisioning, right? Again, uh, when you are using uh, digital business, your objective is to bring as many people into the system. Uh, I talked about it previously. So, which, uh, which requires you to have self-service uh, user provisioning options, right? Uh, when a user comes, they should be able to self-service themselves to, in order to access the system, right? So, uh, this is not only creating the user, but the user should be able to manage all user-related management activities like changing password, recurring password, changing security options, uh, change uh, user profiles, etc on its own, right? The days of calling the IT and IT will do it for you it are gone, right? Everything you have to do on your own. So essentially, the digital business requires a self-service portal for people to come and uh, uh, manage their credentials, manage their use activities. So this also requires an approval and workflow process. So, uh, Okay, so self-service means anybody can come and create the account, but possibly you might want to restrict some set of people or restrict some set of roles they can get it, right? So that result in the workflow being triggered when some people try to do some certain operations by themselves. Let's say I want to change my password, that should be okay. But if I want to change somebody else's password, possibly it might be a genuine case, Possibly it might be an attack. So, so it has to trigger through some workflow so that other people can intervene if it's needed. So I talk about the social identities. So again, when a person access the system using social identities, uh, so uh, you have to accept the identity, but you might have to create a user representation within your system. So there is a concept called just in time provisioning. When a user tries to access the system, uh, the credential is coming, but the time they are trying to log into the system, the user is created, or the representation of the user is created with the social identity associated, or any identity which are not in control of your uh, system. Uh, you just accept that credential, however, you create a representation of the user, which is called the just in time provisioning. The other requirement is now the digital business integrate multiple systems. So when a user comes, you might want to create the users in all the systems, right? Let's say my organization uses Facebook, uh, Salesforce, uh, uh, Gmail, etc. for my work-related activities. When a new employee comes, the, the, it should go and create users automatically in all the systems. And when the person leave the company, uh, if the person already resigned the company, you have to go and unprovision all the places, right? Otherwise, you are just opening the security hole within the system. So this provisioning system is available uh, in uh, most of the identity providers. Uh, helps you to uh, achieve this provisioning users in various systems. Okay, so that is about the authentication. Now we talk about the access control. So authentication is you now identify who the user is. Now you have to verify what are the permissions or what are the activities he can do within the system. So uh, often in security there is a concept called principle of least privilege. You give the least amount of privilege needed to achieve a functionality, right? You don't make all the people as admins within the system. Uh, if they want, if they want to achieve some task, you just give only necessary permissions to achieve the task. So that is something you have to design as part of your digital business. So you have to identify what kind of users are going to access your system, uh, what kind of permissions they need for each of these roles and then just give only those particular uh, permissions to these roles or to these people. So uh, in order to achieve that, there are several uh, uh, several techniques available, one is called the role-based access control, 
basically you allow uh, you assign permissions to the different roles and assign the roles to users of groups. Or you can do attribute based access control. Basically you can say if a person is having an attribute called admin or if a person is having an attribute called department equal to finance, these are the permissions the user can get it. So there is you are attribute you are getting the permissions by using some attributes within the user's profile or user's uh, possessions. Often the other uh, common criteria we need on digital business is to identify uh, when a user tries to access a system from some surrounding. For example, if a user is accessing the system from the office network within uh, morning 8 to evening 5, you might give some additional permissions because you know he is accessing from the office. But if the same person is accessing from somewhere else, possibly you might reduce some other permissions so that they can do some privileged operations. Okay. So those kind of fine grain access control can be done using a, a, a language called Zachman, Extensible Access Control Markup Language. And that is something uh, you might need when you are designing your digital business if you want to give that many fine grain authorization. Okay, so next requirement for the retail business is to have uh, features to audit the user activities. Again, uh, you might not know who are going to access your system if you allow the people to use their social identities. Uh, so when a user tries to access the system, uh, you have to identify who is accessing it, what their social identity is accessing, and what they are doing it, etc. So why you need the auditing facility? First of all, you have to identify what they are doing, especially if they are doing any user management activities or admin activities. You have to record all the actions they are doing in the system. Uh, so once you identify uh, who is accessing, what they are accessing, from where they are accessing, when did they access this particular system, how they are accessing, whether they are accessing from their phone or they, whether they are accessing from their computer, etc. Et Whatever possible information you have to log in, uh, log in and uh, try, try to um, collect as the audit logs. Right? This will give you accountability. Uh, if there are any problems, you can reconstruct the problems, uh, you can identify any attacks, etc. by using these audit logs. Okay, and the next requirement is the analytics, right? Uh, identity analytics is becoming uh, much more important these days. If you look at any of the Gartner's uh, analyst reports, you can see identity analytics is as one of the main concerns for the identity part. Uh, so again, the identity uh, analytics helps you to identify the user's behavior, how the users are accessing the system, uh, what frequency they are accessing the system, etc. So, by understanding the user's behavior, you might be able to predict what are the systems needed. For example, if it's a uh, if it's a New Year time, you know lots of people are going to access. So, if it's uh, blah blah. So, basically, uh, you identify the user's behavior and then predict your future on what kind of system requirements needed. Also, you can predict any of the fraud detection, any of the uh, possible access, etc. Right? If a user is accessing the system on a daily basis on morning 9 o'clock and all of a sudden he tries to access it uh, multiple times within the day, it triggers something saying possibly it might be an attack from somewhere else. So all of these analytics will help you to identify those cases. Then the next step is the API. So APIs are powering the digital business. There are no questions on that, right? And the ability to secure the API and ability to uh, delegate the authentication mechanism, of the delegate the identity information is essential for the digital business. So you might own some resources. Uh, however, when some system access, you might have to delegate your identity to that particular system. So that, that can go and access the services on behalf of you. So that is called the identity delegation. 
So there are some aspects called O2, uh, etc., which helps you to achieve that. Uh, so your identity system should support uh, those kind of features. And IoT is becoming uh, essential element in the digital business. Uh, so Internet of Things uh, kind of coming as a whole, whole part of the digital business. Whatever you do, you might need to get some information from the sensors, uh, in, which is uh, located in various places, uh, which result in the, each of these things, so each of these IoT devices will also get an identity within your system, right? So uh, often in the conventional system, identity is often refers to a human being, but in the new system, in the new digital business, the identity refers to the humans as well as for the things, right? Which also increases the amount of identity you have to deal with. So you have to uh, deal with the explosion of the identities. Uh, so you have to think about the scalability of the identity system because more and more, more than the people coming, there will be lots of uh, devices coming into the picture. So you have to recognize your identity for each and every device as a separate device. So you will end up with uh, different identities. At the same time, which also open up uh, several security concerns because if, let's say, your printer is uh, buggy and uh, compromised, that can compromise all your identity system because some attackers can come to your printer and then through that can attack the system, right? Because it is having an identity within the system. So then uh, consider about the, uh, the principle of this privilege, etc. so that whatever the things I, IoT devices have to access, IoT devices, what kind of permission they have to have in the system, just provide only that necessary permissions in order to reduce the risk, but at the same time, uh, try to uh, identify the identity risk associated with IoT devices. Okay, so now uh, the, your, your perimeter within your digital business is also increasing because of that, right? And uh, your data conventionally resides within your organization. Uh, but now the data is in the cloud, data is in mobile devices and so on. Often the way people protect the perimeter is identify the system, define a perimeter around the systems, uninstall whatever the unused features so that you reduce the risk factors within the system, etc. Et right? All of that will not work in the modern society. Right? You can uninstall features in the cloud system. You might not know where the mobile devices are coming from. So you are, uh, your perimeter has just exploded. And then your attack surface has increased. And because of that, your risk factor has increased. So recognize that and expect people will hack your system and try to prevent that proactively. Right? Uh, so controlling access who is accessing, monitoring it, analyzing it proactively, and predicting any of the attacks, etc., is the way forward. Uh, often, uh, the conventional security mechanisms or some patterns like security by obscurity, where you hide some information, it is there, but other people do not know, so you feel secure, which is called the security by obscurity. Any of those techniques will not work in the modern Business, right? Only way you can do it is control the access, monitor, analyze, prevent, and predict anything. Okay. So then, uh, often uh, when this digital business bring cloud services, mobile services, your internal system, etc., the system has to bridge between the cloud services and your internal services. So there has to be some bridging mechanism for people to access your internal systems. Often, the IT will not let you to access your internal system through uh, calls. So you have to be able to have an agent-based access mechanism where your agent is running inside, let uh, other people to access from outside through the agent. So you have to have some mechanisms around that in order to uh, bridge the gap between the cloud and the internal. 
Okay, so uh, those are the identity concerns. Now let's talk about the other attributes of the digital business. So your digital business often encourage and requires agility. That means you should be able to bring new systems and connect to your existing digital business very easily, right? Which also means uh, the, the systems are changing very frequent. For example, if you are using some cloud systems, the authentication mechanism might change, the APIs might change, uh, who can access, the roles might change frequently, right? So your identity system should be able to react to any of these changes very frequently, very fast, and uh, should be able to access them, should be able to integrate them, right? Again, I'm taking the analogy of the Application integrations here, you would know, uh, if you talk about the integration system, you, when the external system changes, you have to do some mediation magic in order to connect them. So same applies here as well. Uh, you need something called the identity mediation concepts for your identity system in order to achieve this identity. If a new system comes or the existing system change their behaviors, you should be able to integrate again very quickly by doing some mediation changes within your system. Then digital business encourage innovation, right? Often security is, is, uh, is uh, viewed as the restrictive of innovation. Generally, the security people want to keep everything in control. Uh, so if it is not broken, uh, when there is a new innovation coming, they will always ask, why do you need this? Uh, how secure this particular system, etc., etc. So uh, that kind of mentality has to change with the new digital business. Yes, it has to be secure. So the security has to come from day one. It should have come as an afterthought. But then again, we have to understand uh, the digital business requirement is to move fast and bring new innovation. So the security and ID has to be a supportive organization in order to achieve this. Again, uh, so with the new digital transformation more and more, the, I, the business units are in control of what they are doing, bringing innovation, etc. Uh, if you look at the conventional cases of an IT and security are in control, that kind of behavior is changing, right? So business units will bring some new innovations and IT and security has to be uh, supportive for that. Uh, so understanding this cultural change and recognizing this cultural change will help uh, in your digital transformation journey. Okay, so with that I'll just introduce the WSD identity server. Um, uh, the Johan and Prabhat will talk after this. They will go into much more details into this. But uh, identity server uh, allows you to do identity federation, single sign-off, identity provisioning, access control, analytics, uh, API security, etc. And the, it, it connects various uh, social identities. It connects various systems. It provides uh, user portal for self-service uh, capabilities. It provides a catalog in order to do web uh, application management. Uh, uh, it provides admin portal to do various administrative activities. So almost all the patterns I have used, I have talked about uh, is uh, supported by WSR. So before we finish, uh, I just wanted to show two uh, uh, pictures from Gartner. Uh, so this is. Uh, a, a chart called Access Enforcement Trend, uh, which is similar to the Gartner's Magic Quadrant. So this is a quadrant. So they view the authentication and authorization system in two different angles, two different orthogonal axes. So one, the horizontal axis is talking about whether your processing happens more uh, kind of devices like uh, laptops and computers or whether it is happening at the edge level, uh, like mobile devices and so on. Uh, or the, horizon, the vertical axis talks about whether your data is closed, uh, 
whether only some people can access your data or whether it is open where your partners or outside people can access the data and then it intersects into four different partners and they recognize uh, the, the, uh, the topmost corner as the uh, common norm coming into the picture uh, going forward. This is about 2020 prediction on the identity uh, uh, enforcement trends. So basically they predict adaptive authentications, authorizations, uh, incorporating user behavior, as analytics, threat intelligence, more and more web and mobile apps, and more and more IoT devices, uh, multi-sources identities, where the identity comes from various sources, social identities, etc. This will become the norm of the digital business, right? So we have to recognize that and work towards that. Second picture is about adaptive security architecture. So again, in your digital journey, your security architecture is not a fixed architecture, it's an iterative architecture. So you have to identify that, you have to predict, prevent, detect, and respond, and then you have to go on a cycle in order to uh, identify uh, the correct match, mix and match, and uh, iteratively for your architecture. Okay? So those two uh, thoughts are finished.